Okay, so we've gone through the browser and we found some sounds that are pretty cool and assigned a user tag to them. Now it's important when you're listening to these sounds that you don't just play the sound, but you also use the transform pad and the performance controls because they're an integral part of how this sound is going to work. So what are the performance controls and what do they mean? Well, I'm going to come over here to one of my Dave Loves patches. And it's a vocal patch. It's pretty interesting. It's rhythmic. Now listen to what happens when I start moving the focus of this transform pad around. Now what's that doing? Well basically these performance controls on the right hand side, that's eight knobs and two XY pads, they are assigned to parts of the synth and uh, basically I'm going through different snapshots of their settings. So here I've got delay and reverb and cutoff and resonance, all that sort of stuff. And over here on my XY pads, I see that there's crossfades, symmetry. If I go up here, yeah, volume A and volume B. This one's doing additive symmetry. So pretty interesting ways for us to change the sound around. Now, if you want to, there's not very descriptive transform pads here. I can control click and either store a snapshot, which is basically a setting of all these different knobs, or I can do things like swap the current snapshot, all that sort of thing. But I'll just rename it. So I'll call this the OG. Maybe I'll call this one a bit glassy. Cool. Now, on the right-hand side, these performance controls had been set to the instrument in the advanced mode. But if you're opening up patches that you got with your library of alchemy sounds when you first downloaded this update to 10.2, there is a logic to how they're auto-assigned. On the left-hand side, one and five performance control are going to usually be assigned to delay and reverb. The controls next to them, that's two and six, are going to be the filter cutoff and resonance. Next to that, we have some kind of modulation, and that's going to be three and seven. There are going to be some sort of modulation in the patch. And then four and eight, that's when we're looking at uh, what they call imaging. They're usually assigned to something that has to do with imaging. Okay. Now if I go to a different sound. That'll work. Go to simple mode. Simple mode gives you just the transform pads, the performance controls, the XY pads, and the ADSR assigned to volume. Now below that, we have something called octaves. Right now my octave is set to C1. So watch what happens when I play a chromatic scale from C1 up. So you can see how it cycled through all the different parts of the transform pad, right? So let's hear what that sounds like. Now luckily with the effects and stuff, it's uh, even though it's moving fairly quickly, things blend pretty well. So that's what the octave is doing. Um, at C1 and up, I play a chromatic scale and it's switching between the transform pads, right? Now it's pretty much instantaneously moving from one transform pad to the next transform pad. If I go to the rate, I can actually change how long it takes to change its value from one snapshot to the next. So I'll say two bars. All right, I'm going to hold a chord and then I'm going to switch the transform pad and see how long it takes for me to change from one pad to the next.
So as you hear, there's a nice long seamless transition from one pan to the next. Now, next to that, we have the wheel. So this is what your mod wheel is assigned to. You can have it assigned to individual controls. You can also assign it to the X or the Y of the XY pads. Then you have your master envelope. So attack, decay, sustain, release. Then you have inverted controls. So this will actually, if you push the mod wheel up, the value on the knob will go down. Then we have inverts for the XYs, and then we have invert for our ADSR master envelope for volume as well. Or you can choose none. That's fine too. Why meddle around? All right, next to that, we have our snap volume. So your snapshot that's being stored within this transform pad, you can attenuate the volume. That's a really good idea because sometimes your, your filter might be set with a really high resonance and it might kind of bite your head off. So that's how you keep that from happening. All right, so next to the transform pad, we have our actual performance controls. So the performance controls, there are eight of them, and they are assigned when we go into the advanced mode, which we're not going to do right now. To the right of that, we have the XY pads. If you control click in the XY pad, you can actually see where they're uh, going. So we have X is going to morph all X and Y is going to morph all Y. If I control click here, I can see that this one's going to uh, volume B depth, volume B and filter three reason B. Reason, that's resin, come on, resonance. Um, y, we've got filter drive, cut off and resonance. And then we have the four effect sense. So pretty cool. All right, so now that we've checked out the performance controls, I wanna show you something in Logic. I'm going to open up the tracks area and hit B. So look what popped up below. We get the transform pad. And as I move the focus, you can see that it's also mimicking what I'm doing up top. So that's pretty cool. And then we get two of the performance controls on the right hand side. Well, wouldn't it be cool if I could see all of the performance controls? Well, if you just pull up slightly, I'm sorry, pull down because they need to be smaller. There you go. So now we have both the transform pad on the left and then we have the performance controls on the right with the XY pads and the master envelope. Okay. So basically simple mode and your smart controls are pretty much going to work the same. So now that we played around in the transform pad, we need to get to our advanced settings where the real dirty work gets done.